Welcome to Real Estate Radio Live, an informative and engaging podcast discussing everything you need to know about the world of real estate. Your host, Joe Kachera, provides you with insight and guidance on how to buy, sell, finance, and invest in real estate. He also offers real estate tax management strategies, new construction advice, home improvement tips, and much, much more. And now, to guide you around the world of real estate, here's your host and Real Estate Radio Live team leader, Joe Kachera. Welcome in, Joe Kachera with Real Estate Radio Live. Thank you again for those who continue to follow the show and give us uh, feedback and information from time to time. We appreciate that very much. For almost 11 years now, we have doing, been doing live radio and now podcasting as well. And as I say all the time, uh, we think that maybe we might start live radio again. Could be maybe by the end of the year, we have some things in the works right now. I certainly would love to do more live radio. And uh, won't, that won't have anything to do with the podcast, of course. If we do that, that would just become the podcast. But I will keep everyone posted on that. Appreciate all the feedback, emails, and response. Uh, I'll remind everybody again and apologize in advance that uh, the uh, podcasts have, um, we've scaled back on those in the last year because of a lot of things that are going on. Business adjustments, uh, business was super, super busy. And we had a lot of things going on with our business uh, in terms of bundle select too. So it took a lot of time. And, but we are back now doing the podcast once a week, and uh, we have some uh, exciting new guests and shows here coming in the near future. Before we get started again, just want to remind everyone, this show is brought to you by Bundle Select, bundleselect.com. Bundle Select partners with corporations to offer their employees an online platform to bundle all their real estate lending services and relocation services in one location for discounts. It's an employee discount. It's an employee benefit, no different than medical dental 401k. If you're listening to the podcast and you are an employee and you would like a wonderful benefit to be, to be provided by your employer, please go to bundleselect.com or if you're a person in HR or benefits and you'd like to offer this to your employees, it's easy to do. It's free, and uh, it's a wonderful program. We have now have uh, make it official. We now have over 37 million. That's right, 37 million employees on the Bundle Select platform, and uh, it's going really well. We're excited. We're going to be making some big announcements here pretty soon in terms of um, some of the partnerships as well. So again, for more information, go to bundleselect.com if you're an employee or if you're a company owner, it doesn't matter what size HR benefits, go to bundleselect.com. You can provide uh, some information and get a demo. All right, today I am going to talk about the housing market peaking. That's right. And new ways to consider second homes that you may not have considered. Second homes has become a big, big interest. They're up over 80% people purchasing second homes. I think most of us know the reason why. One of the biggest reasons is the pandemic. A lot of people have realized that, gee, maybe I could work from home. Maybe I could buy that home in Tahoe or, you know, Santa Cruz or the beach or Napa or Montana or Wyoming. Maybe I could buy a second home at a place that I really love to spend time. And now it makes more sense because I really don't have to be in the office. That's really another topic for another time. But uh, I do believe I'm one of the people that believes that eventually here in the next new year or so, I would say a big percentage of people will be back working out of offices. I really do. I know everybody thought offices would be go away. No one would ever go in an office anymore. Everybody's going to be working out of their home. I'm, I mean, I wish that were true to some extent. I think that most of us maybe believe that temporarily. But, you know, since some of these announcements, Google has come out, Apple, both Google and Apple have come out and said that people are coming back to the offices and those are two major corporations, obviously business, publicly traded companies, uh, not only here in the Bay Area, but the United States and, and around the world. So we will be going back to the offices, whether we like to or not. I'm not saying everybody will, but a large percentage of people eventually be heading on back to the offices. So what will that do to second homes? And we'll talk a little bit about maybe some new approaches to buying second homes. But We'll get to that in the second segment. The first one we're going to talk about, housing market, has it peaked? And I think it has. 
here we are. We'll go on record because we are officially on record whether we like so or not. June 23rd, 2021, I do believe the market has peaked. I do believe the Bay Area, Silicon Valley market has peaked. Now, most of us really don't know this until we do a look back. What I mean by that is it's going to take two or three months from now when the market's down 5, 10, 15%. Then everybody will kind of look back and say, this is kind of where the market peaked and this is where it started to come down or this is where it really started to retract a little bit. We all know that the housing market has been on a tear. It's been on fire. It's been a extremely gifted seller's market. It's been a difficult market for buyers, uh, which is very typical in a strong seller's market, especially when you're in an environment like we are in Silicon Valley when there's no space to build. So I do officially think the market has peaked, and I'm not here to say that it peaked on June 23rd or June 20th or you know May 26th. What I am saying, though, is I do think a couple of months from now, we will look back at the data, and I do think this is my opinion. I follow this every day. We study this every day, me and my team. We look at data every day. We do interviews on a regular basis. Matter of fact, we've done over 1,700 interviews now in the last 11 years. But more specifically to the topic today of the Silicon Valley housing market peaking, I really think it has. I do. And again, we won't know for a couple of months. We'll look back and see how close or maybe how close I am, whether I was right or wrong. Uh, the more important part is not whether I was right or wrong, but what does it mean for you? And does it change any strategies one way or another, knowing this information? So knowing that the market has peaked, what does it do for you, the seller? And what does it do for you, the buyer? We're going to talk a little bit about that. Okay. And I'll break them down for both, both components. Now, again, just to kind of finish up the market peak, I really think it has I've seen trends. We've seen trends in the last couple of months that would suggest it's started to slow. And I do think it has peaked. Now, I could look back a month from now. I could be completely wrong. We'll see. But a lot of that would indicate some of the stuff we're looking at indicate that the market has peaked. Now, please keep in mind that I'm specifically talking about the Bay Area market. I, Even though we study the market nationally, we study all of California and we study the United States and the housing market from a national perspective. We don't report on the details of that wholeheartedly on a regular basis, just because we spend more time kind of focused here on the Silicon Valley and the, and the greater Bay Area. So I do think we'll look back and see that the housing market has peaked. And I think when we take a peak back several months from now, I think we're going to see that it really started to kind of flatten and peak, I think really in um, May and June. And some people might say April, but let, I'll, I'll call it May and June is really where we're seeing some flatness and a peak, if you will. Now, sometimes you have to be careful because June is a tricky month. June is a tricky month because you have graduations, you have kids getting out of school, you have people moving, you have a lot of people that put big decisions on hold for the month of June because there's a lot of things going on in the month of June. Summer's just getting kicked off. Uh, again, graduations, celebrations, and then usually in July is an indicator of what's going to happen for the remainder of the summer. So we'll see what that holds. So what is the, the question I have and the thing that I think you need to be asking yourself right now, if this, if this is pertinent and pertains to you, is what does it mean today, if we're having this conversation today, in your strategies going forward, what does it mean if the market has peaked in the Bay Area? Let's talk first about what it means if you're a seller. If you're a seller, if we're me, and you're a seller and you're seeing that the market is peaking, I think that you wanna do two things. One, you either wanna aggressively try to get your house on the market right now or fairly soon, knowing that we're looking at some peak and we're looking at maybe some additional inventory that's coming up just a little bit, that could have an effect a little bit on your price point. But so I think you have two choices. If you really intend on selling and you really want to get the best price you can, I think you put the market, your house on the market as soon as you can and make sure it's priced well, and then take your best chance to still get a premium on the sale of your home. The second option is, let's say that you're not in a big hurry all of a sudden, 
And let's say you take a step back and you say to yourself, you know, I really wanted to move to Texas or I really wanted to move to Arizona or I thought about selling my home, but, you know, I'm not sure if the timing's right. And I'll likely stay in the Barry a little bit more. Or I'll likely keep this property a little bit longer. If that's the case, if you're a little ambivalent about it and you're not quite sure what you want to do, my suggestion would be then to hold and we and see what happens over the next six to 12 months. See what happens in the next six to 12 months. As much as everybody is feeling wonderful about their homes and the stock market and your 401k, this is really eerily sounding and feeling a lot like 2007 and 2008. For those that you know what I'm talking about, right? Everybody walking around at parties and your, your job and coworkers, and I don't care where you were, people were talking about how, how much their house was worth. People bragging every day about, can you believe that my house was worth a million dollars a year ago and now it's worth 1.5 million? I can't believe this. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but this, when, you, when you're hearing everyone talk about it and get excited about that, just like you're hearing everybody talk about 40 to 50 to 60% returns in the last year or so in the stock market, those are real, by the way, <laughs> they are real. But to think that those will continue, you're gonna set yourself up for disappointment and you're going to set yourself up for other things. If you think, you honestly think that your, your stock market holdings or your assets or your 401k or your investments or whatever, and housing is going to continue to go up 20, 30, 40, 50%. Don't set yourself up for that. We've been here before. We've seen it. We've lived this before. We've seen this movie before. I would be careful. I would say enjoy the appreciation, enjoy the returns in the market we all have, but understand there will be a setback and we don't know when and we don't know how by how much. We don't know what that pullback is going to be. So if you're contemplating and you're not really in the need to sell and move or sell a property, I would say hold on to it and then see what the next six to 12 months has in store for the market before you think about listing your home again. Through all this that we're talking about right now in terms of housing and peaks and non-peaks and depreciation and all these types of things, the one thing that they'll probably be constant, at least through 2022, it sounds like is low interest rates. So 30-year money right now is still in the low threes. 15-year money is in the, is the mid twos. It's, it's remarkable. 15-year fix. In the in the low two low to middle two percent, it's crazy. It's outstanding. It's exciting for people that that want to get that. And as a side note, I know you hear it from me all the time, but I won't. I can't stress it enough. Take advantage of cheap money. Take advantage of all time cheap money, especially especially if that money is attached to an appreciating asset. I've talked about this before, and I just want to—I want to pound the desk here and remind everybody: if you have an appreciating asset in a property, in a home, and you could lean, you could get a, a you know leverage that appreciating asset. And again, let's just say it's worth a million dollars, and you have a five hundred thousand dollar loan at two and a half or three percent interest, and the cost of money is that low, but yet you have an appreciating asset of a million dollars. You can't do much better than that. That's why people have been so successful that have been that have bought and held real estate for the last 20, 30, 40, 50 years. It's more than a coincidence. It's more than a coincidence. So take advantage of the cheap money. If you haven't already done so, do that. Make sure you do it. Okay. So just to summarize again, if you're, I really believe that the market has peaked. What you do that with that information is up to you. What that means is up to you. What that you know may mean nothing. It may mean something. It may mean you pass this podcast along to family, friends, coworkers who might be interested. But remember, we've been following uh, the real estate market for 20 plus years. We've been doing the radio show and podcast for over 11 years. We've done over 1,700 interviews. I'm not saying we have all the answers. I'm not saying we're always right. 
But I will say that the majority of the time we do get this stuff pretty accurate when we have market changes and things to report on. So the market has peaked. We believe that. I believe that. And uh, I'll be the first one a couple of months down the road. If, if that's not the case, I'll be the first one to come back on and share the information and admit to I was wrong. And it could be, it could be the case, but all the data points towards being the case right now at this point, I think we'll look back again and think that, I think that the month of May and June is, is really the kind of the peak, peak times. It might be April, but um, that's, I think what we're looking at this at the moment. So make your decisions based on, as I always say, don't do it emotionally. Sit down with pen and pencil to paper and figure out what makes sense to you and, and take a long-term approach and strategy on what that means um, on your decisions in terms of real estate. All right, so now I'm going to talk about second homes and a different way to potentially look at second homes and how to own a second home and, and what that means. So most people think of second homes as you know, let's just give you a scenario, right? You live in Silicon Valley and you love going to Monterey or Tahoe or Carmel or Napa. And you decide, you say, listen, we, you know, we, we spend two to three months a year in Tahoe and Napa. And why don't we just buy a second home? We love it over there. We know we're going to spend time there instead of wasting money on VRBOs and renting hotels and all this. Why don't we just buy a second home? It's, it's intriguing. It's, it's, you know, it's exciting when you think about that, having a second home in a place you really love, you want to visit where you can relax and really wind down. I think we all like that. So then what happens is most people would then look at and go purchase this place in Tahoe or Napa or Carmel or Monterey or Santa Cruz and start spending time at their second home. The thing to be careful about are a couple of things right now. And the reason I want to bring this up, if you could afford it and the numbers pan out and you think that, again, hey, listen, Joe, because I think you have people in different camps. This, let's, say, let's say camp one, camp number one is the people that are in the camp that they say, listen, Joe, I love Tahoe. We're up there two to three months a year. This makes sense. I understand financially it's not a great investment right now. But I do think 10, 15, 20 years from now, it'll be a great investment. In the meantime, me and my family and my friends could enjoy this beautiful place in Tahoe. And there is something that you cannot quantify financially for peace of mind and tranquility and a place to get away. I get it. That you can't, it's hard to put a dollar value on that. So that's someone in camp one. Camp two is the person who says, I really love to get a second home. It's exciting. It, it just, you know, my family, everybody I know, they're doing it. You know, I feel a little pressure. I spend a lot of time there. I think, you know, I want to do it. I know it doesn't make much sense, but I think I'm going to pull the trigger and just do it because, you know, I feel like I'm going to lose out. That's kind of camp two. And you got to be careful. Camp two is, is a tough one. And you got to be careful if you're in camp two because, you want to be careful of impulse buying, especially on big ticket items. And you want to be careful about emotionally, um, even though I know a lot of emotions drive purchases when it comes to homes, I get that. But you do want to be a little bit careful if you're not knowing, if you don't know what you're getting to. In other words, you it's it's the the glamour and the mystique and the, the excitement of a second home, right? You kind of get caught up in that. You get sucked in and it just it's like this big smoke screen and you're just in love with the idea of owning in Napa or Tahoe and Santa Cruz. And you buy a place and you realize that this is, this is a real cost and it's a second home. So I'm not getting any rental income. And, you know, this house is costing me $4,000 a month and I'm only using it, you know, three or four weeks a year. What am I going to do? So you have to be careful, the camp two people, if you're not really committed to it long-term and it makes you nervous and it makes you uh, apprehensive, then listen to your gut and put, again, put pen and pencil to paper, see if it works. The other part is if you're in camp two or camp one, doesn't matter what camp you're in, <laughs> I'll use camp today, you can always rent it. You can always VRBO. You can always 
you know, one of the beautiful parts about a second home, I think, I have loved about the idea of a second home is that figure out how much time you're going to spend in Tahoe or Napa or Santa Cruz or wherever, and then rent it out the rest of the time. So let's say you spend three months a year. You're going to spend three months a year. Then budget that out, cost that out, get your spreadsheet out, figure out then the other nine months that you're going to rent it and what you're going to collect and what the cost will be. And I think you'll find out in most cases, depending on how much you put down, to how much you finance, depending on the cost of that home, property tax, et cetera, upkeep. I think you would find that if you rent, if you rent one of these places, we find for at least half the year, six to seven months out of the year, in some cases, there's probably a break even or still a little bit, believe it or not, you might be a bit of a positive depending on depreciation write-offs, things like that. But and it depends on how much your rent, rent you're getting. If it's a place where you're getting you know, good rents, then that's, that's another story as well. So just be careful on that, on second homes. I do think, here's the other thing, before I get to the last part about second homes, the people in camp three, <laughs> camp one, two, three, the pricing of second homes has skyrocketed. And when I say pricing, the, 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 the cost of money for second homes have skyrocketed in the last couple of months. I did a show on this a week or so ago. Some people may not listen to it. You might want to go back and listen to it. So what a lot of people don't know is interest rates and cost and fee structure to finance a second home, refinance or purchase a second home has gone up 100%. And a lot of people know that. So just let me just kind of bring some clarity to this. Up until several months ago, if you were to purchase a primary residence or a second home, there would be absolutely no difference in pricing and rates and fees. That's right, no difference. Be the same. Now, they, when I say they, Fannie Freddie, which is our, our greedy group of government people that don't know one, you know, they don't understand how to run a business or spend money wisely. So they come after the consumer and they gouge you. That's okay. I'm in this business. And whether they like to hear it or not, I don't care. It's the truth. You know, they assessed a 50 basis point cost to refinance just because they could. Just because they could. Everybody was making money hand over foot. And they said, you know what? We're going to just throw 50 basis points on there just because we want to make some more money. And now they've done the same thing with rental properties and second homes. So the reason I bring this up, it's really important. So now it's more expensive if you're financing a second home for the first time. Just keep that in mind. It's a lot more expensive than it was before. So the last part I want to talk about second homes, which is unique, not new, but I think super interesting and exciting to me, and I'm actually looking at, at some of these myself personally. So it's nothing new, but some of you may have heard of fractional ownership. There's a company out there called Picasso. There's several others. There's, again, it's not anything new. People have been doing this for years, but there's a different twist to it in some cases. And I would suggest that one of the most, I think the, the wisest purchase or the wisest decision you can make right now for a second home would be if the situation's right for you is fractional ownership. Well, some people might say, well, what's fractional ownership, Joe? What do you mean by that? Let me give you an example. So the structures are out there. Again, companies do it. They've done this for years. So it's not new, but some startup companies are putting a different twist on it. So here's the, the premise and here's the, the model. Instead of a timeshare, where you put money up and you have no equity stake in the property and you pay monthly fees, right? Timeshares historically have a bad name. I know some people swear by them, but I think when you, the bottom line is, there's a reason why there's millions of websites that say, get rid of your timeshare.com. And there's, you know, there's a reason for that. It's because people impulse buy. People get into these timeshares and they think they just get sucked in and this is a beautiful place. I'm going to come here. I love it. They drop 25 grand and they start paying five, 600 bucks a month. And they realize what in the world did I do that for? For one or two weeks or a year. And then you run the math and you think, wait a minute, I just spent 25 grand and I'm spending five to 600 bucks a month. So I'm spending, this is, wait, wait a minute. I'm spending five or six grand a year. What, wait a minute here. And 
I could have just took some incredible vacations for the next couple of years with that money. So I'm not knocking timeshares, but you really have to do, be careful. There, there's a reason why the majority of timeshares turn hands or, or turn over, turn hands quite a bit. So fractional ownership. I think this is the way to go, ladies and gentlemen. I really do. Fractional ownership. So let me run this. So, so let's say, again, Tahoe is the place you love. Let's just use Tahoe and Carmel as two examples, right? So this is camp three. And I, I think right now, to me, this is one of the most exciting opportunities out there. I would pursue it if I were you, if you're a big, if you're really considering a second home. So here's a great thing. There's a company, a couple of companies out there. You could do it yourself if you had enough people. You'd have to get the legal structure. It's more involved if you do it yourself. So I'll give you an example. There's a home in Tahoe that the company is selling fractional ownership with. So they're going to sell eight shares. Okay. So let's just, let's just make the map kind of easy, even though we know that this is not going to be the case for the home you want. So let's say eight shares and the home's worth $800,000. And so as a fractional ownership, you pay $100,000, okay, plus closing costs, plus the cost. So, you, so everything is split eight ways on this property. And I mean everything. So if you purchase it for 800 grand, you're putting in 100 grand, right? You're also paying for any fees and costs related to the transaction. You're also going to divide the property tax, homeowners insurance, upkeep, all that stuff, eight ways. But here's, ex here's the exciting news about fractional ownership, you guys. You own a fraction of the property. You actually have a stake in it, which means as it appreciates, guess what? Percentage-wise, you get that appreciation. And here's the other part about it. I love this. Think about this. This is the part I love. I mean, this is just one of these cool concepts. So you take that property and you divide it up eight ways, and then you divide it by 12 months, 365 days a year, whatever you want to do. And you're going to end up with several months. It might be a month and a half. I forget the math. It depends. But you're going to end up with maybe six to eight weeks, could be six weeks. And again, it depends on the structure, but let's just, let's just, you get the concept, right? So you could end up with maybe six to eight weeks, maybe, of using the home, the second home, which most people would say, God, Joe, I mean, six weeks a year, are you kidding me? That would be the most I'd ever use, and I would love that. So now you get it, six weeks a year of a place you love, the place you love to go. You've only got a hundred grand plus costs in. You're not buying that yourself for 800,000 and you're not incurring all those costs yourself and all that potential risk of owning a home. Now you can get your second home, realistically spend the four to six weeks or whatever that number is that you like, which most people would say that's perfect. And I'll speak for myself. That would be perfect for me. You know, I'm a, I'm a beach person, so I would lurk more towards Carmel or Monterey or something like that. Uh, I might even look at some different areas that I enjoy. Tahoe's another one, but I'm a more of a beach person. So if someone could say, hey, Joe, look at this ownership or look at this fractured, fractional ownership where, again, whether it's a million and a half or two million, again, let's just say my share is 200,000. And I put up 200,000 and I split those costs eight ways, but then I get that place in Carmel or Monterey for four to six weeks a year, that would be perfect. It would be perfect. Now you still run the numbers, you still do the math, you still figure out if it works for you. I'm not saying, you know, it's, it's works for everyone or, or it's an automatic, but this is an exciting way, ladies and gentlemen, to have home ownership in a second home spend the realistic time that you're going to spend there and still have an investment that's going to appreciate and grow for you. It, it's a, it's a best of both worlds. I think, I think it's far better than a timeshare. I think it's far better than owning a second home outright, unless you have the money to do it. I mean, again, if you have the money to own a home, second home outright, and you, you're, you're going to use it. And a lot of people are, I get it. Some people that have the money. And again, I, I know they're like, Joe, I, you know, I don't want anybody else in my house. I want it to be my home. When I show up, when my kids show up, when my family shows up, 
I, I don't want anybody else. I don't want to worry about someone in the house. I get it. But not everybody could afford that. So I'm suggesting if you want the, the dream of having second home ownership in a place that you love, whether it's Tahoe, right? Carmel. It might be for those people in Montana, Wyoming. I mean, it could be anywhere, South Carolina, North Carolina. I don't care what it is. Look for the companies that are offering fractional ownership. And many times what they do is they buy these, these properties outright. And I will tell you, they do assess, there is additional fees. Don't get me wrong. Someone's going to make money. There's no free lunch. So typically you're going to pay an additional fee up front because there's legal fees, there's contractual stuff you have to do. There's all these things that go into fractional ownership. So it costs a little bit more than your hundred grand as the scenario we, we talked about. It's probably going to be additional, could be an additional 15 to $20,000 depending on how expensive it is to structure it. But there's companies that do this. I think it's a great idea. I think you should take a look at it, pursue it. Again, the one that I know of is Picasso. They're actually catching a lot of heat up in Napa. Napa's trying to run them out of town. <laughs> Napa doesn't like what they're doing. They don't want little, little cute hometown Napa. They don't like the idea of big corporations coming in and buying homes and then doing fractional ownership. There's a lawsuit, matter of fact, right now against them, and they're likely not going to win. I should say Napa's not going to win because this is not a timeshare and this is not VRBO. That's, that's the difference. I should say, I should, let me leave VRBO out. This is not a timeshare. They're trying to sell it as a timeshare. This is fractional ownership, which is a lot different than a timeshare. So I think it's going to be a tough battle. I think uh, Picasso and other companies will win out against counties and states and cities that try to sue them to keep that control. So anyway, real quick summary. I really believe strongly the market has peaked. What does that mean for you? It might mean different things. It depends if you're buying or selling. As always, you could reach out to me if you have any questions. I, I feel probably 20, 30 calls and emails each week from the podcast and people that are looking for advice and feedback and information. We have a team here that do financing. That's what we do. So if you need finance purchase or refinance or anything to do with financing, we're here to help. We have a team of real estate agents as well. And uh, anybody also in the need of CPA, financial planners, uh, estate planning attorneys, anything like that, we have a group of people that that, uh, that help our clients and, and beyond. So we're happy to help. So again, second home, take another look. That's another opportunity. I'm not saying it's for someone, for everyone, but I would definitely look, and there's such a hot and heavy market for second homes. Instead of taking on a big time purchase yourself and taking on that liability, look at fractional ownership. I think it's a great, great opportunity. And before I duck out, I'm going to be in Hawaii starting tomorrow for the next week or so. So it'll be likely that I'll be doing a show from Hawaii. And I think I'm going to hook up with my good friend, Jack Russo, the legal power mind of the Silicon Valley. He is now in Florida most of the time. He's still uh, going back and forth from the Bay Area to Florida. But I think I'm going to try to link up with Jack Russo. And we're going to do a podcast on second home ownership and Hawaii and Florida and other places as well. We're going to tag on and see what Jack's been up to and uh, talk a little bit about this housing market and the secondary market as well. All right. For more information, you can always reach me a couple different ways. Joe at reradiolive.com. That is Joe at reradiolive.com. Or you could text or call 408-838-9060. That's 408- 838-9060. If you could help me with any of this, if you have any questions, reach out, give us a call. More information, you can always go to reradiolive.com. Thanks again for tuning in. Thank you for again, from the bottom of my heart, for all of you that have followed the show. I appreciate it very much. If you have ideas for shows or any guests, please continue to pass those along. I hope you have a great rest of the day. Until next time, take care. You've been listening to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Subscribe to our podcast. Discover more at reradiolive.com. <laughs>